Hey everybody, welcome back to another top 10 video. Today I'm gonna to do a little bit of a personal one um, that's um, gonna be titled The Top 10 Military Surplus Guns I Wish I Still Had. Now, I'm gonna preface this with part of the, well most of the fun of collecting anything really is the hunt, all right? So, um, there's a lot of guns that I've traded and sold over the years that it's like, yeah, that was a good trade, good deal. Most of these guns is when I was, uh, hitting a pretty financially tough time and I had to sell them to pay bills and stuff. Um, I'll, I'll just kind of explain a little bit of this background story of why I had to get rid of the certain weapon and since none of these are in my collection anymore, but someday they will be because again, the hunt is the fun part. I just have to get some things in order before I start collecting again, but these are the top 10 firearms that I wish I still had. Uh, they're all military surplus. Some of them are getting really hard to find. Some of them I traded or sold years ago. Some of them are pretty recent. So without further ado, here we go. Number 10, uh, oh, by the way, I have pictures of some of these from when I was selling them and then some of them I don't because they were so long ago and I just don't didn't save the pictures. So some will have pictures, some won't. Um, I'll just be posting them kind of down here so you can see. Now, sorry, without further ado, uh, number 10 is going to be my Dutch Beaumont Vitale model 1871-77. Um, although I do still currently have one, the stock is sporterized and it's a family thing so it's got sentimental value and I can't really bring myself to sell it. I had a pretty decent Dutch Beaumont Vitale 1871-77 which I made a shooting videos with. I actually fired it um, and I got it for a steal. They're cool because they're antiques but they're getting really expensive for some reason. Someday I'm going to get another one for sure and uh, one thing that's kind of crappy about older like first generation bolt action guns is they're all custom fit so you can get a stock for one that's sporterized and it's not going to fit into the end of the other stock that you get the action's not going to fit in there because they're all custom fit parts and it's not like later on when they actually got like Mausers where you can interchange parts so i gotta find another one eventually that's complete which won't be that hard but they're getting expensive anyway i won't spend this much time on each one Number nine is a Gewehr 8805 that I had years ago. And here's a nice picture of the uh, close-up of the tiger striping on the stock. I think it was refinished, but whoever did it did a really good job. And you can always strip poly off and not damage the wood itself. Now, this was a pretty good shooter. I went out and shot it. It was a S mark, you know, 8805. So it took the charger clips, fired 8mm surplus ammo. Turkish marked, I believe, or maybe it wasn't. Anyway... I had to sell it, came on tough time, it's an antique, so it's easy to move, and uh, yeah, it paid the bills, but I really wish I still had that particular one. I've had a few of them over the years, but that's the one that I actually really miss. So number eight is going to be my Turkish forestry carbine that I picked up um, from a place that's no longer in business, and these things are pretty rare. There's about 5,000 of them known to have been made, and I had one, and... I bought a bunch of really dumb stuff, racked up some debt, and I had to sell it to pay some of that down. That one I do regret because that was totally preventable. And uh, it was really kind of fun to shoot. I reloaded it for it and shot it a few times, kicked like a freaking mule. Really unique piece. Uh, I was going to make some videos on it, but never got around to it because I was dumb. So that's number eight on the list. Number seven is one for two reasons. One, because it was a uh, pistol I bought from a friend, and two... They're getting really hard to find nowadays. Uh, it was my Mauser C96 pistol, and it had some what we believe is battle damage in the uh, magazine wells, you can kind of see in this picture. And it came with the reproduction holster and whatever, slash uh, buttstock. And it, although I didn't really like shooting it, because it was pretty shot out and the snap kind of hurt, you know, you got, you got hammer, hammer bite pretty bad on that thing. I did make a video on that, so if you want to go back in time and on my channel and check that out. but. It was just a cool pistol to have. Uh, maybe someday I'll get another one, but they are so damn expensive. Now I can't justify something that I really don't like to shoot um, for that much money. So that's gonna be number seven on my list. Um, number six is a rifle that I got many years ago and I sold many years ago because it was when I first hit hard times. This is the first victim of my stupid decisions about eight, seven, eight years ago. Seven years. Is an Argentine 1891 Mauser that was all matching in beautiful condition, all original condition, made by Ludwig Luva, which so it's an antique with the original crest. Um, those are super hard to find with the original crest. 99.9% .9 of them are gonna be ground. And um, this was just a beautiful rifle. I actually never got around to shoot it. 
and I sold it on Gun Broker, and the guy that I sold it to initially was a dickhead, and you know, said, eh, I'm gonna return it, and he gave me like a bullshit reason. That should have been my sign that I should have just sold some other stuff, like some Mosin Nagat 9130s, and kept that one, because I got it back, and then I ended up having to sell it. And I sold it for more than I paid for it, but that one I regret, because that's not gonna be an easy one to replace. So, 1891 Argentine miles over the crest, don't have any pictures of that. That one sucked, that, that, I regret that a lot. But I had to do it at the time. Number five is something that I really, it's just because they're really hard to find and I'm probably not gonna be able to find another one unless I get really lucky. But again, that's part of the hunt. It's gonna be my um, Danish slash Chilean contract, Madsen M48, bolt action rifle and 30 out six. Now I got this from uh, the Mosin crate uh, back when he had them a few years ago, he got a few of them. It was in beautiful shape, as you can see. It needed an extractor, which is why at the time I was like justifying the selling of it. Needed to get some cash. It definitely helped me out with that. But man, I wish I could have shot that thing and had it in the collection. It's just such a unique rifle. It's the last bolt action rifle ever made for a military. So uh, yeah, that's gonna be number five. Now we're getting to the top, top five actually. So number four is my 1898 Craig Jorgensen U.S. you know rifle, 30-40 Craig caliber. I had to sell that one, but man, did I love shooting that! I made a couple videos with that. Eventually, I'm gonna have to get another one just because they're such smooth shooters. Uh, they're super insanely accurate, low recoil. Uh, you have to reload for the cartridge, but it's really easy to do. You can use 308 bullets, and and it's a really, really, really smooth, buttery action. It's probably the smoothest bolt action of any surplus rifle I've ever experienced. If you lube it up, you can literally just use the tip of your pinky and it'll, it's just beautiful. I love it. It's just as smooth is not like fast. I'm talking smooth, like really smooth feeling and just amazing. Uh, anyway, so that's one that I really, really wish I still had that particular one too. I got for you really good deal because it had a penny kind of brazed or glued under the rear sight for some reason. And I popped it off and just lightly kind of shaved off the residual and you couldn't even tell it was there. So I ended up making some cash on that one, but man, I really wish I had that rifle. That was a nice rifle. All right, anyway, my top three now, uh, because I was reminded of this from a comment that I got on my video of shooting this rifle, it was my Carcano M1891 um, rifle made in 1916, I believe. And it was made by, I think it was Roma. Um, I had, to, I'd have to watch back and watch the video and almost come to tears. That rifle was insanely accurate, reliable, in great shape, a nice World War I era example, um, all matching, beautiful, beautiful rifle. And I had to sell that. Um, and about a month after I did that, my finances improved greatly. And I was like, you know, I really didn't need to sell that. I didn't get that much more than I paid for it for that one. So that one is kind of, uh, I really wish I still had that particular one because those are also getting really expensive because people realize that they're really good rifles. So. My Carcano model 1891, definitely can get another one of those, just gotta fork over the cash for it. Um, now number two is a story of early days of collecting surplus and why you should not um, do impulse buying shit. So I had a literally mint condition Lithgow number one Mark III SMLE rifle, mint condition, all matching, had not, I mean, this thing was probably in storage since 1916 or on a rifle rack somewhere. And then they just, it was just immaculate. Um, I got it for like $200 back in the day, which was, you know, a decent amount for a SMLE, but it was Australian. So I was like, okay. And I got super excited at a gun show because I saw what I thought was a, a 1903, a Springfield 1903 that everyone calls it. Well, it turns out after trading that rifle plus like 250 or $300 cash for a national ordinance model 1903A3 with a rear aperture that was literally a screw with a hole drilled through it, uh, modified on some like shitty sheet metal homemade site base and a plastic handguard. And if you don't know anything about a national ordinance 1903, um, most of the parts are surplus, except for the cast receiver, which actually had some issues with breaking and stuff. Um, and when you got a plastic hanger and something like that, and I overlooked that because I got so excited because I really wanted a 1903. I didn't care how I got it. 
So I ended up trading that thing plus $250 cash for a, at that time even, a $300 rifle. That one sucked, that one hurt, but that taught me a lesson to not be an impulsive idiot. Uh, when I see something that I like, I look at it, I examine it extremely closely, I, I take a lap if I need to, I calm down and then go back to it because I will never be able to find a, a 1916 Lithgow SMLE in that condition ever again, especially for 200 bucks. So that one sucked, learn from my mistake, I really wish I still had that rifle, really wish I had that one. And then my number one, number one choice, should I do the plug for my uh, Patreon right now or should I just do it? I'll just do it. I'm not going to be a dick. You can, I guess, whatever. Um, my number one that I really regret selling because of the circumstances around selling it was my Hakim rifle. Okay, so it's an Egyptian rifle patterned after the Swedish Youngman AG-42B, chambered in 8mm, used in the 1960s. I had a sweet example with a matching bayonet. Yes, matching. The bayonets are equally hard to get for those things. Actually, a little bit harder. And that thing was so fun to shoot. That was one of the first videos I ever made on YouTube on this channel. And it was a fun rifle to shoot. It was unique. It was loud. It was insanely accurate. Excuse me. And I was uh, on tough times. Remember I told you I sold like Hercano about a month before times got or things got better for me? Well, I sold the Hakim literally one day before my finances like improved greatly and I was like okay after some stuff got settled and things went through. And this is many years ago. So one day before that, somebody paid me for this and it was on gun boards and I I'm a man of my word if you if I say I'm gonna sell it to you and you give me the cash that I desperately needed a day before I actually was fine, I'm gonna be like, oh God. And I did, I sent it to the guy. He paid me for it, it was his technically. I could have just sent him his cash back and been like, you know what, sorry dude, I actually changed my mind. But then I get negative feedback and it bites me in the long term and karma's a bitch, so that would have caught up to me. But that was the worst thing that I regret actually doing um, and and most of these again at the time when I needed the cash I don't regret it because I I needed the cash it got me to the next step you know jumping that's fine but I just wish I still had them this one I I don't know why it was just the universe or whatever the hell you believe in telling me yeah you gotta be a little bit more patient you gotta be a little bit more patient and stop panicking so I've taken that to heart but uh, yeah this this the Hakeem oh my god that thing was just awesome and I actually got a pretty good deal on that one too, and they're pretty expensive now. But I'm gonna get another one eventually. They're fun as hell to shoot, and then I'll make some videos on that. So hope you enjoyed this video. It's a little bit more of a personal one. Uh, sorry if it's going too long. I don't really know how long it's been going on. But um, yeah, I mean, hope you enjoyed this. I've actually had this question a couple times, like what guns do you regret selling? And and again, this is 10 out of probably a couple hundred, you know, that I've since I started the hobby. Because yeah, you, the hobby's fun, man. You trade. You sell things that you don't want to fund other things. Uh, it, it's amazing. So, um, yeah, these are the ones that I just wish I still had. So, 10 of them. And would I swap them out for certain ones in my collection right now? Probably a couple. But not all of them. I wouldn't have enough to trade for that because I like what I have now. So, anyway, thanks for watching. Again, this channel is funded based on your support. So, check out the Patreon. The link in the description. It's a dollar a month, guys. And I post exclusive stuff on there. Really neat stuff. It's interactive. I do polls and um, whenever I get stuff like that, I can do. I can have props to, to make videos on like World War One, Vietnam, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. things like that. Uh, go out and make shooting videos because that costs money as well. I just can no longer afford to self fund the channel, so I'm relying on um, viewer support, which has been going fairly well so far. So I appreciate all you who are currently patrons. If you're watching this, thanks so much. Also, make sure to check me out on BitChute. Um, I'm going to try to make sure this one posts up. I've had some issues in the past couple days with these not syncing, but either way, I'll upload this one to BitChute if I have to manually do it. Um, so yeah, check me out on BitChute. Go follow me on there. Let me know what you think in the comments. Um, again, this isn't like my opinion piece. It's just these are the ones that I personally regret um, getting rid of. Um, well, I don't regret getting rid of them. I regret not having them anymore. So yeah, let me know what you think. Um, we'll see you on the next video.